glad you joined us today. Remember while we're going through the program, call the prayer lines across the bottom of the screen, 307-637-PRAY, that's 7729. We're seeing miracles on those prayer lines and our prayer partners wait and stand by to pray with you and agree. For you new viewers, oh, we're so excited. We have a great program today, but let me introduce us first. Uh, I'm Charlene back to Marion, one of your God's View hosts. Uh, this is Jennifer Griffin. We have Marianne Peluso and of course um, our fiery redhead <laughs> Lana Gardner and today we have with us guests and I'm going to wait just a second to introduce them to you but welcome to God's View. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have today with us our guest are amazing. They are celebrating their 20th year going into maximum and minimum prisons um, all over the country. Uh, it's Second Chance Ministries. You can find that on Facebook, which is Second Chance um, Outreach Ministries. And we're going to have all of that at the bottom of our screen. But he is a worship leader, songwriter, which you are going to hear one of his songs at the end of this program. And you will want to stay tuned to call some friends for the whole thing. Very anointed man of God is here with his daughter, which is now on staff at YWAM Denver. And please, Please help me and the girls welcome our guests to the show today, uh, Lanelle Ondroff and CJ. CJ. Thank yes. you, Ondroff. <laughs> See, I, oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. How many times did I say it before we started? You did it beautifully. I'm not, I'm just not saying it again, darn it. <laughs> but anyways, welcome you guys. Thank you so Thank much you. for taking your time out and being with us. I mean, I just want to hear everything, you know, because we've gotten letters from prisoners and what a dark place, but yet you guys bring in light and want to hear whatever you want to say. Tell us if you want to tell us a little bit about you, whatever you want, it's yours. Hello. Maybe someone well, that's been hey. impacted by the gospel. Oh my goodness. Uh, where do we start? Yeah. Yes, this has been 20 years now that we've started, uh, since we've started our ministry. And uh, it was back then, Marianne, uh, back when I, we were singing with you ever so often, and uh, a friend of mine came and asked me to bring my band, my worship team, to a, a minimum security facility near San Diego mm -hmm. for the very first time. And uh, I was really taken back you know it was just like one of those moments when you think oh my gosh are you kidding me it was like as foreign as like saying i want you to go to antarctica yeah. that kind of deal and uh i just said oh you know and she started telling me a little bit about it um uh it's minimum security uh, correctional institution and uh it's called rainbow and it's just north of escondido and and i was just like spit my head was spinning over the word prison that she had <laughs> said and uh, I said are you did, back up just a little bit you said prison right she says yes but it's not really what you're thinking it's one of those kind of country club kind of places you know <laughs> and um, so she said don't worry about it it's not a big deal oh also I wanted to show everybody my moose on my cup I don't, I don't, I don't have a heel but anyway uh, I just uh, you know I told her I said you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna get before God and I'm gonna ask the Lord what he would have me do and um, I, I remember going home and I got on my knees and uh, this little girl right here was still in mama's womb at that time. Wow. And, wow. Uh, and uh, uh, I just asked the Lord, Lord, if, if I say yes to this invitation, what in the world am I going to say? Mm. Because, you know, I kind of feel like howdy doody. I mean, preacher's kid raised in church and <laughs> go to a prison. Okay, prison, what am I going to yeah. say there? You know, I mean, right. it, because you, let's be real, you don't have any choice over whose home you're brought into. Mm -hmm. When you're born, you don't, have any, you don't have the gift of being able to choose. So, Lord, what in the world would I say to people that have been raised just different than me uh, with, 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 you know, uh, narcotics in the house or uh, different habits and, you know, different uh, vices that, that divide homes and, and send people to prison? What in the world am I going to say? Mm -hmm. And I felt like he spoke to me so clearly that day and I uh, felt like he just breathed a word straight into my heart and said, 
are you telling me that you don't have anything to be thankful for? Oh, wow. And um, so he just kind of put it in a little question. I was like, uh, no, that's not, ex that's not what I'm saying at all. In fact, I'm very thankful. And it was like, okay, then you know what to do. So I picked up the phone and I called a lady and I said, yes, we'll be there. And uh, as the, the story goes, we went and I had a whole big band and sound system and, and all of this really fun stuff. And we set up this beautiful park-like setting, beautiful green grass and trees around and the, their dorms were around. And, uh, and uh, the ladies all came out and there was about 60 ladies just sparsely uh, seated out in, uh, in this area. And I remember doing about 45 minutes to an hour's worth of music with my team. And, and then I just picked up my Bible and I shared just some of the simple truths of who Jesus is, why he came, mm -hmm. and his heart and his love for these ladies. It was a minimum security women's camp. Mm. And uh, I'll never forget giving that invitation. And 30 ladies came up the first oh. time, the first day. Oh. Thank and you, all Lord. my team and, and these 30 ladies were all in a Thank big circle, you, holding hands and praying. Everybody who had tears in their eyes, oh. and I was a mess. I was really messed up. Because yeah. uh, uh, how often in church do we see that kind of response, yeah, you know? So, I mean, it really, really rocked my world. I was hoping to, that I might have an influence in somebody else's life, and they ended up really changing mine. And here you didn't even know it would be prison. We, we sometimes no get this clue in our mind, you know, how's God going to use us? And... But you would have been a million years not thought prison. Never. And here God now, 20 years celebrating. Yeah, what I year. thought what might be, be a phase for a couple of years or whatever has now grown to my passion. And it's second chance ministries. Outreach ministries. Yeah. Do you ever so, get burned down? You know, um, I have moments when I get tired just like anybody else does. But I, that's when I just kind of go to the mailbox and, and boom. There's a stack of letters from all the inmates that we just yes. were with wow. three days ago, and they just go, oh my gosh, CJ, you know, you said this, or you sang this, or my goodness, I've known you now for 15 years, wow. and I see you more than my own family, wow. uh, so you're like family to me. I hope you don't mind if I consider you part of my family. You know, that <laughs> it's is just awesome. it's such powerful, powerful, You know what, when ministry. you're really in ministry, um, that's why... I if you really love the Lord, you may get a little discouraged, but I think burnout is, is I think burnout is when you're doing it in the flesh. Right. Yes. You know, people That's true. always say, you know, burnout, burnout. But you know what? If you're really like you are, didn't get burnout because here you are 20 years later. Yeah. I yeah. think that's fabulous, you know, uh, what you guys are doing because it's such a dark, dark, dark place. But, you know, you sang a song that, well, you sang quite a few songs um, here in the studio today, but the one that we're um, airing is, Lord, I am amazed by you. And tell us a little bit, just a little bit about what the worship means in the prison. It's got to be like make a way for, I mean, it's got to be so awesome. Yeah, you Because you do it yourself now, right? Not yeah. a band? Um, 80% of the time I'm by myself. Mm. Okay. So, um it's kind of James Taylor-esque, if you will, just uh, the mm -hmm. guitar and me, but uh, yeah. and Jesus, the yeah. biggest, the biggest portion. Yeah. But um, yeah, the guys, uh, they are so hungry to be loved and accepted by society once again because they really oh. don't get treated well while they're inside. Mm. And uh, there's a lot of stereotypes that go along with being an inmate just because you're there, just because you've got the number on your chest, because you're dressed the way you're supposed to dress. Um, there's a certain way that you're treated by the staff. And a lot of the guys that are on staff, they're Christians and they understand and they're much, much better. But man, the ones that don't know the Lord, oh, they're so brutally um, unkind. Gosh. Gosh. Unkind and condescending. Oh, yeah, yeah. It exactly. It just, it beats, it beats, it, it's yeah. like hammering a, a, dead, a dead animal. I mean, for yeah. lack of a better right. illustration. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, when you go in and uh, number, I would say that the number one thing that, that affects them is just the joy of the Lord and the love of family. Yeah. yeah. That's the number one thing. And then would be the, the, the second thing would be the worship, the, just the music, what God does during music. Uh, music is a very oh, powerful tool. Powerful. And we know it can be either used for negative or it can be good, used for good. And I choose to use mine as a weapon uh, and uh, as, as a, a tool to bring the presence of the Lord into the prisons. So. Wow. And you're, you know, when, when you were playing, I, I was watching you and I was thinking, he's so good. Yes. Don't you? You know, and I'm sure that those... <laughs> 
those people that are incarcerated, they look at you thinking the same thing and are just drawn to you because they don't have that. Yes. And that, I mean, not only are you good, but you know, you exude Jesus. And well, thank you. you. Thank you, you so much. Daddy. How long have you yeah, grown have you in the prisons, the prisons with Daddy? Her whole well, life, basically. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's my exact That's a yes. Yeah. You typically have to be 18 to go into the prison. So I went into my first prison in 2012, and it was a women's um, institution in Oregon. And so my, my, both of my parents and I went in together, and we sang a couple songs, and the women were just weeping. It was absolutely phenomenal. So wow. needless to say, I was hooked. And I understood right from that moment why we do what we do, and Aww. so it was really powerful. Linnell so has been able to um, um, sing with us wow. throughout her whole life. I mean, it was a f uh, when she was five years old, first yeah. time at yeah. Easter at Pastor Matt and Amy Storrs yeah, Church, that's what I remember. Yeah. and she got up and, and sang and, and really kind of brought the house down. It was <laughs> pretty amazing. Yeah. But then uh, she's had a life where she's been in, in involved in music and on the stage, and her mm -hmm. smile is just amazing. Yeah. I think you can see Jesus yes. in her smile, you know. Yes. Oh. But uh, so yeah, when uh, when we went into that women's uh, service, I remember very very well. It was a hundred ladies packed into a room that was uh, very very small. So it was just wall to wall ladies in that room and then when I just started I, I don't even think we sang yet before they were crying yeah. <laughs> because I just introduced Linnell and you know when they see a family there yes. with with joy and yeah. with God and we're not arguing or we're not bringing in a bunch of baggage and, and all of that we're just walking with the Spirit of God um, they were a mess right right from the introduction mm -hmm. really That's and awesome. so when we started singing and we mm -hmm. you know break into the harmonies and it's just, so your guys, it's really fun. Your wives preach so much, your mm -hmm. wife and your other son, mm -hmm. the four of you. I mean, they minister together and sing together, and you don't have to have the drama. You can have, no one's perfect. Uh, uh, no, one's no perfect, absolutely so, not. But there, Jesus brings um, a peace and a, and a harmony in your home. Yeah, you totally. Guys, I've always admired that about your marriage and your Thank children you. now that they're growing. And, in ministry with you, how powerful. We have, you know, the opportunities for struggle just like anybody else right. does, but you know what, we all, when things do happen and, and there's a clash, we always come back to the cross and we just go, okay, wait, we've got vows here, we've got commitments and promises to each other, mm -hmm. and we, we understand what the standard is. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Of how the family Good is supposed word. to be. Mm -hmm. And so when we go to prison, really, we just bring that with us, and it just, yeah. we don't even try, it just, yeah, that's who you it's are. just, yeah, mm -hmm. so that just, uh, is a oh, blessing to the guys. That so. is so awesome. So you just work just with your family? Do you uh, no, 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 no. I have um, multiple members of, okay. of Second Chance that, that come in, but I don't have a set three or four guys that play with me or whatever. I have, like, the Lord's just blessed me with a lot of relationships mm -hmm. uh, of guys who want to play want to be part of it. So if I've got a, an or event... Or just even come minister. An event, them. yeah, an event that requires a, to have a whole band or maybe an extra speaker or something like that. I've mm -hmm. got lots of people to pull from. He's got some very talented, anointed men like Charles, you know, yeah. Chuck mm -hmm. Butler Band. I mean, just skilled and anointed. They yeah. are uh -huh. both. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's That's amazing because you've been in this now for 20 years. So yeah. you're, what, what are you doing to celebrate your 20 years? We are having an event on March 21st at North Coast Calvary Chapel in um, Carlsbad, California. Mm. And we are inviting former inmates who we met in prison, who are now home, that have paroled, oh, awesome. who have yeah. successful lives. Yeah. Families are all together. They're all coming from several different states, converging on uh, that this is meeting. Amazing. It's going to be fun. Let's go and get clean it. The thing is, is I've got, <laughs> got to say right now, with when we give dates on here and we dated it, um, since this is, um, this may air after, so we don't want yeah. anybody showing up like at a different place <laughs> yeah. when, yeah. when, because really we, uh, if, if they get it, you know, a lot of times people will. And so, but we didn't give like a year or anything. So that way yeah. um, they can, you know, because this by time, you know, sometimes Russia or whoever plays it, then, mm -hmm. you know, but is that so cool? It's going to be wonderful. Chaplains and, and pastors all coming together, plus all of our friends and the people that support us and help us go. Yeah. Wow. It's going to be a great party. Yeah. So if anybody would want to give in to this ministry, they could just go to Second Chance Outreach Ministries on Facebook and get a hold of you or? CJOrndorf.com. .com. Okay. Mm -hmm.
O R N D O R F. Orndorf. Two yes, F's at the end. Yeah, two, two F's. F's. <laughs> two F's. Ah, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, but it'll be across the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so they can contact you, and then they can get a number, and they can call you. Because you'd really like to come into um, Wyoming prisons too. I would love to. And so, uh, I mean, but you go all over. So is there everywhere in this country you go to? About seven states is where we go back. Okay. Um, I've been to more states than that for a one-time event, but uh, as far as going back, it's about seven states, and about you know, 40 different a, prisons. That's a real compliment when any ministry or minister or singer is asked to come back. Yes. That's very, mm -hmm. very powerful. Mm -hmm. And so that you're on a circuit and you go back, this is a lot for the validity and, and what you're doing Thank and you. the impact in the prisons. Thank you. Do you have like a story that stands out? Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's a good. story. A Let's story. see, how much so time do we have? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, well, it's minutes. getting there, but go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, because we want a story. Uh, I've got a story, it's pretty hairy. Exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm in Idaho, Idaho uh, Department of Corrections. I'm brought into the psych ward to do a concert, okay, for the first time ever. It's never been done, done in our ministry. It's never been done in the prison. Wow. So I bring a guitar in, and there's about 20 cells. There's gentlemen inside these cells. So I, I didn't have any equipment. I just walked up and down the, the corridor and just singing to the guys. Some of the guys were right up next to the glass. Some of them were up next to the cuff port, this little opening where they put their lunch through or whatever, and they were just listening or watching at the glass. And there was a, a man there uh, right up next to the glass uh, in one of the cells that was just watching, watching, watching intently. And I could, I could, uh, my heart was just drawn to this guy. His mm -hmm. attention was there. And uh, so after the whole thing was over, I walked all the way through the place and just thanked the guys for their attention. Some of them were sleeping, you know, a couple of them were just like out. And they have some of them medicated. So, um, but I just said thank you to some of the guys for listening. And uh, I got to this one gentleman and I said, Thank you for, for listening. I could tell that you were listening to every word, every song and everything. And he said, he says, man, he says, I am moved beyond words that you're here today. And I said, um, thank you so much. You know, what's going on in your life? And he says, well, and this is not pretty. You might want to take the kids out of the room. He says, um, just a few weeks ago, I, I killed my wife. Oh. And he said, I was so overcome with guilt and fear that I turned the knife on myself. Uh -huh. And he had bandages on his hands, on his wrists, and on his neck. Mm. And he says, I wow. have over 1,500 stitches in my wow. neck. And I lost so much blood, the doctors cannot imagine why I'm still alive. Wow. And at first I was, I was upset at, at the, you know, upset. And then I was absolutely, um, inspired to tell him i know exactly why you lived yes oh yes, oh, yes. i know exactly why you lived and he says you do and i said yeah i do i said god has given you another opportunity yes. a second chance oh. to make things right with him after this horrible horrific moment oh. in your life and the guy just started weeping mm. after this incredible moment in your life when you did something you had never dreamed in your life you would ever do Wow. And I said, oh. God brought brought us here together for this moment. Wow. Hmm. Oh, my gosh. I know I, yeah, and I was starting to tear up, and I just wow. go, brother, Oh, my gosh. You know time. what? With that, I'm going to bring him to the Lord. Somebody's and I thank there. you yes. so much. Wow, what is I mean, I can't believe really, that really that went moment. fast. Yeah. I mean, fast, fast. I wanted to hear some more about, yeah. gosh, we need, when you come back <laughs> this way, we need to get you guys back on. Yeah. Mm. Listen, that was a perfect thing to leave off with. I mean, this man, literally, you just heard, and, and if there's kids in the room, they may not understand this, killed his wife, turned it on himself, but Jesus let him live to come into his life. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he loves you today. If you don't know him, please, that's what we're about. 
here. Just ask him into your heart. Ask him to forgive you. Just say, Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that you died and you rose again for me and that you're coming back. I want what this man was talking about. I want what this precious girl was talking about. I want what those ladies have. The only way you can have it is if you've done that prayer. And if you did, go to the bottom of the screen, call those prayer lines, and we will get you a Bible out to anybody who said that prayer. And uh, let us know. Let us know. Oh, my gosh. He loves you so much. We love you, but Jesus loves you yeah. more. And so if you said that prayer, remember, call the prayer lines. Please stay tuned for this song coming up from our guest today. I mean, a powerful song. Lord, I'm amazed by you. And boy, after that story, what? Oh. We are amazed by him, yes. what he'll come and he'll do in our life because of his great love for us. Amen. And you'll want to go to our guest uh, information, of course, uh, across the bottom of the screen. He will come into prisons. He will come in and minister at your church. They will do. They're not just prison. They'll, they'll come in and minister at conferences or whatever, and you will want them to come in. Their heart is so pure, and God is looking for that this hour. He really, really is. And we love you so much. And we thank you for tuning in. And we say goodbye just for today. God bless you. Mwah.
how you love me So glad that you love me. I'm so glad that you love me, oh God. Go to www.godsviewtvshows.com. To view all God's View TV show hosts, books, and CDs, Joshua and Jennifer Griffin's music CDs, Marianne Peluso's music CDs, Lana Gardner books, and Charlene Bactamarian's books, visit www.godsviewtvshows.com to purchase your products today. Be blessed over and over again as the Holy Spirit ministers to your heart by ordering today's program on DVD or CD. DVD $9, CD $7. Both include shipping and handling. Order your copy today at www.godsviewtvshows.com. Must specify topic of show when ordering. Remember, must specify topic of show when ordering. Go to www.godsviewtvshows.com to view all God's views.